so we see right here that it's going to break out into a Cold War again, or a World War III. So there's going to be a, lo a lot of death. But this, you ain't seen nothing yet. Now let's look at verse 5. Verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, okay, now let's open the third seal. I heard the third beast say, so the third, one of the four cherubims, the third one, right. is introducing the third horseman right here. Come and see, so come and take a look. And I beheld, so John looked, and lo, a black horse. So now comes out a black horse. Let's keep reading right here. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. So this rider who's riding on a black horse, he's holding a scale. So if you read throughout your Bible, that scale is a representation, or what they did during that time was concerning about the economic power, how you're weighing your money, how you're balancing the scales on the weight of the food and your money, your economy. So they put all these things on a scale. I'm sure you've seen that in like history shows or in old movies, right? Uh, where they, they give these shows where people are putting things on a scale. So that during the biblical times, this was referring to calculating weighing money. So notice right here that Wall Street is going to just shoot out of nowhere after the war. It's going to go bad. And you're also going to see that it says a pair of balances in his hand. So what are they going to weigh? Verse 6, and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say. So now another cherubim is speaking out again out of the midst of the four cherubims. What I find pretty interesting, I don't know the reason why, but out of all the four horsemen, it is this particular black horseman that the cherubims speak out twice, which I don't know why. Maybe it's just there. That's it. Maybe I'm just looking into it too deep. But the voice comes out again in the midst of the four beasts, say, a measure of wheat for a penny. So you're paying a penny for a measure of wheat. Now that kind of language, measure and penny, during the days of biblical time, as well as, and three measures of barley for a penny. So you might say, okay, what does that equal? What's the amount there? So that's actually a, a ration, a single ration of a Roman soldier, actually. So have you noticed that during the times where we have um, war, conflict, and hurricanes and all that, what does a government resort to, you notice, right? The, the, uh, the army food, right? The MREs, you ever seen them pass it out? Yeah, so then they'll pass these food, uh, soldier food rations. I mean, the Bible's way ahead. You'd be surprised how the Bible's like way ahead. While this is going on, you got FEMA coming out and all these, uh, the army coming out and then giving what? Soldier food rations. Why? Because famine's going to spread. But a, Romans, uh, a single Roman soldier's food ration, you got to realize, is not like today's American soldier food ration. You got to understand that a Roman soldier during that time, it's like, <sighs> it's like small food. You're all going to be starving. And notice it says, and see thou hurt not the what? Oil and the wine. So what's interesting is that when this black horse comes out, so we know who this black horse is then. This is famine right here. So famine will come. Because of the, the detrimental effects of war, I don't know if you heard about what happened to Germany after World War I. I mean, they were like in crisis mode. And they were paying so much money for amount of food and bread. I mean, it was so bad. But guess what? When this happens, it's just going to be just as bad, if not even worse, during that time. And during that time, while famine is going around, everyone's measuring food to see how much food you can get. But there's a certain amount that famine will not touch, you'll notice. There's a portion of food famine will not touch. You'll notice that the oil and the wine. Now, oil and wine, what you got to understand is if you read throughout your Bible, that's considered rich people's food right there. So what it shows right here is that the rich people, they're going to be the ones left alone. Famine will not touch. They're going to be the ones who will hoard and take all the food. 
Whereas the common people, they'll be starving to death and going by a Roman soldier's food ration right there. So then think about this. That's why when you hear a lot of the uh, conspiracies that you've researched, these elites, what are they preparing for? The elites, they're preparing yeah. to have their own haven yeah. while the right. common people die out. So then the elites, they're going to be the ones that are going to live off. They're going to be in their own little secluded area. That's going to be hit off. And they're going to eat, they're going to have the oil and the wine while the common people die out. That's what's going to happen. The common people die for their names, for their governments during the wars. And the common people blindly follow what these elites say and promote about this world leader. Not much different than today. Not much different than today. Yeah. I mean, you notice that the, I mean, don't get me wrong, Christians, we would prefer capitalism than socialism, yeah. but you got to realize that in both sides of politics, there's always a flaw somewhere. And in capitalism, it's not flawless. It's not 100% perfect. In capitalism, you got these rich uh, bankers, yeah. elites, and uh, filthy millionaires and billionaires who are living off fat and rich while the so they are the special 1%, while the 99%, what? They don't get as lucky. So you notice how up-to-date, how current event your Bible is? It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. It's very amazing. The Bible's way ahead of you. The Bible's way ahead of you. You'd be surprised. Let's look at the book of James. Keep your hand here. Let's go to James. If you're, uh, we're going to return to Matthew 24 eventually, too. So if you want to go there, too, you can go there. But we're going to go to Matt, James 5. James 5. Is this really going to happen, Pastor, that the poor is going to die out and the rich uh, are going to be wealthy and fat? Oh, yeah. Look at James 5. Look at James chapter 5. Look at verse, look at verse 1. The book of James condemns rich people. You might say, why would James do that? Because James is not talking about people during his timeline. He's talking about the end times, the tribulation. So Christians who try to apply the book of James to Christians had better be careful in doing that. You can get Christian do some Christian doctrine here, don't get me wrong, but don't apply the whole book of James to Christians. When you do that... You're taking away valuable lessons that God's trying to show you here. Look at James 5.1. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. God's going to avenge the rich people. Why? Look at verse 3. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. See that? They're hoarding all the money. You notice that the money that we have today, I mean, that, pay, that dollar bill is you got to realize it's worthless you got to realize and now we're going to electronic that's how worthless it's getting it's losing substance you don't get gold you don't get gold i mean the government you know how many trillions of dollars in debt they are trillions of dollars in debt this is no secret even uh political science professors liberal college professors who i studied under they'll say do you know how much in debt we are trillions of dollars you know why because the reason why is that See, they don't have this rich substance. It's that certain 1% that's taking it. And the, all they're going on is borrowed credit and debt and et cetera. And they pretend this money, this thing exists. And it doesn't. So this special 1% are, holding, are hoarding all the gold and the wealth at verse 3. But look at the last part. Ye have heaped, to get, heaped treasure together, right? They were hoarding it. They were heaping it. Treasure together for the what? Last day. Oh, see, that's tribulation. Yeah. Rich people at the tribulation hoarding their wealth, this 1% elite. But look what they do at verse 4. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by what? Fraud crieth. Look at that. See, they're holding back the food from them. That's what's going to happen in the last days. Now, here's something that I'm not too sure of myself, but what's very interesting is that Jack Chick, in his Chick comic books, The Four Horsemen, yeah. when he draws out that black horse, you know the, who's the one riding it is? It's a Jesuit. He has a Jesuit riding it. You know why? Okay, you thought this was wild enough in conspiracies? Let's get even deeper. If you go through the, like, the deep, deep, and you're trying to find the top of the pyramid, 
What you're going to find out is Jesuits were always involved. If you look at the top of the pyramid, Rothschilds, you'll see Jesuits there. You want to look at the top of the pyramid of certain bankers, you'll see Jesuits there. You want to see the top of the pyramid concerning the Masons, you're going to see a Jesuit somewhere. You're going to see some, some Jesuit crawling out of nowhere, somewhere out of anywhere. The Jews dominate the banks. Well, guess what? You'll see a lot of Catholic bankers too. Uh, the Jews dominate Hollywood, so they're taking over the world. Well, you're going to see a lot of Catholics involved in Hollywood too. See, this, the, the Vatican, the horror of revelation, is behind everything. Yeah. If you want to look at uh, the Rockefellers, if you want to look at the gold at Fort Knox and all this kind of stuff, you're going to see these intelligent, uh, was it intelligent agency guys? I'm not sure. But there are these people who actually dug up the research concerning about the gold and the economy, and you know where it's going to trace back to? The Vatican. Uh -huh. The Rothschilds, who, uh, who, who all the people and conspiracy researchers say he's the guy that holds all the wealth, guess what? The Knights of Malta, which is a second tier level below Jesuits, the Knights of Malta, count all their banks from the Swiss banks, total it together, it amounts more than the Rothschilds wealth. How about that? And not only that, if you study, I have a video, I forgot the title of the video, it's uh, uh, about uh, Babylon, Jesuits, Banks, Hollywood, something yeah. like that. If you watch that, I will read documented sources showing you that the economy, that the Jesuits were holding it. Oh, one more thing concerning Rothschild, so-called the man who holds all the world's wealth. What is his title? You probably didn't know this. His title is called Guardian of the Vatican's Treasury. Yeah, you didn't know that? Yeah, crazy, crazy. Look at that. So you'll see Jesuits involved like Somewhere, some Catholic, some Jesuit in the corner somewhere. You're going to see them. They're involved everywhere. Jerusalem, you know, Jerusalem. The, you, the Masons are taking it over. The Muslims or the Jews are taking it over. Well, guess what? The Catholics are already there too. And guess what? They took control of some tights, some sites where you do touring. Yeah. Where Christians want to tour the Holy Land, the Catholic Church already had a dominion of them. Some of their uh, orders of the monks already took property of some of them. So if you want to take a Christian journey trip to where Jesus walked through in Jerusalem, you're going to have to pay a Catholic tour guide or a Catholic company. <laughs> the modern Bibles, you know, look at the Novum Testamentum Grace, which is the so-called standard Greek text of all modern Bibles today. You'll see two Catholics, two Catholic names I, and Jesuits in there. They put it unashamedly in their preface. You don't believe me? Look it up. Look it up. Look at these names. Find out their names, and you'll find two Jesuits, two Catholics somewhere. See, they're everywhere. So that's what I find interesting. So it may be that while they're holding all the wealth while the world is starving, so then the elites, they get their funds from them. Rothschild's taking care of them, and Rothschild is taking care of his hellish majesty. If the Antichrist is the Pope, it would make sense, wouldn't it? See, when you look up the conspiracy documentations with current events and the scriptures, and not only that, Bible-believing preachers throughout past history who said this guy is the Antichrist, the Pope, everything clicks. It makes so much more sense. Everything's clicking. Okay, so now let's uh, go back to Revelation again, Revelation 6. You thought that was really interesting? This is the most interesting. It gets crazier and crazier, doesn't it? just gets crazier and crazier. You would say, give me a break. I'm over here. Give me a break. No, God's not done. Because remember, the tribulation is known as what? God's what? Wrath. You ain't seen wrath yet. Why would God do that? Why is he so mean? Because he put up with your garbage for 2,000 years. I'm sure seven years of time he can do what he wants. 